Hello guys, and welcome back to MythCast. If this is your first time here, hello. If this is your second time here, this is episode number two. So last week, I recorded this pretty early in the week. The uh, the day after I recorded this, I was laying in bed, kind of, you know, it's kind of early in the morning, probably around seven o'clock. I felt this little, this little shake. And I just thought to myself, well, that's kind of weird. That, that feels kind of like an earthquake. And then all of a sudden, all hell breaks loose and everything is rattling. And I leap out of bed and I get to a door frame because we were having a 5.7 quake. And that's actually the biggest quake I've ever been in. And I'm a California girl and I was pretty used to being in, you know, tremors, fours and whatnot. And it was a, you know, kind of scary event. So that was fun. So, you know, you spend like the rest of the day kind of sitting through little aftershocks and trying to calm down your neighbors who've never really been in an earthquake before and they're panicking and trying to make sure that, you know, the house isn't going to fall down and stuff. I mean, for what the size of the earthquake was where I'm living here in Salt Lake City, it wasn't too bad, um, at least the shaking. Um, over in Magna, where the earthquake was centered, there was some damage. I mean, fortunately, no one got hurt and earthquakes. We've had a few tremors since then. Um, in other news, um, the world is virtually on fire. You know, everyone's just kind of living day to day. I'm very good at the social distancing thing thing because I've been doing it for years. So it's kind of not really affected my day to day because essentially I stay home most of the time unless I need to just go to the store or take some Etsy orders to the post office uh, or go, go for a walk. So I spend most of my day alone doing artwork. So seeing people not know what to do with themselves when they're by themselves is odd to me, but I'm an introvert. So I can always find something to do. I do hope everyone is safe and healthy and they are taking the CDC's advice to shelter in place. Don't go out unless you have to. Don't go to parties. Don't put yourselves at risk because you're not just putting yourself at risk. You're putting other people at risk. The virus is very infectious and seemingly healthy people are, you know, going into very serious situations in some cases. You, you don't know what this virus is going to do to your body. Most people are going to recover just fine, but there's a handful of people out there, obviously, who this virus is affecting very severely. And it is one of those things where I've gone to the grocery store just to go get basic stuff. I'm not hoarding things. I'm, I'm not going to add to that problem, but it's been such an unusual situation where I realized just how much here in the United States, at least, you take things for granted. And you go to the store and you go to buy toilet paper and there is none because it's gone. Or there's restrictions on what food you can buy and there's not a lot of options for what food you can buy because there's not much in the store. It's definitely a new experience, I think, for a lot of people. Now, I'm perfectly fine. I always have extra stuff in my house. You know, I never let my cabinets get to the point. I never let my cabinets get to the point where I'm bare. So I'm good for a couple of weeks, at least for dry goods and whatnot. And I hope everyone else is safe and you have plenty of food and you are taking care of yourself because that's probably the most important thing right now. Take care of yourself, take care of your family, check in on your elderly neighbors, you know, check in on your friends and whatnot. Make sure everyone's doing okay and that no one needs stuff. Because right now, don't rely on the government to help you out. I hate to say that, but just you gotta rely on your community. So in less serious news, I wanted to hit on the topic this week of art projects and why I like to do art projects and what kind of projects I am working on. So in 20... 18, I did kind of a character design project series. In 2019, I elaborated into the project I called Heroes and Villains, which had a bit more to it. It wasn't as simplistic as the previous series. This allowed you to pick your character's species, its gender, its class, um, and a trait. So it gave me enough information to 
build what I, at least what I figured was an interesting character just based off of those specifications. And doing projects like these are very freeing and it lets me use my imagination a lot. And I think part of the reason I don't do as many commissions as I used to, hardly any in fact anymore, um, though I probably, I really want to open up commissions again. It's just this pro these projects have taken up so much time that I'm afraid to take on commission slots because I just, I don't want them to sit for weeks or, you know, up to two months at a time. When I do these projects, it gives me so much freedom to be able to just create. Where sometimes where I'm doing a commission, I'll get characters or I'll get bogged down with weird requests for a character or people asking me to draw characters in different styles or people asking me to draw things I'm not comfortable doing. Like sometimes I will literally get people asking me to draw characters with big elaborate backgrounds and scenes and you, you notice I don't do a lot of backgrounds because I find back backgrounds to be very difficult and that is definitely something I need to work on. They just, it takes a lot of time for me to do backgrounds and that's kind of why I just stick to doing characters because I just find that more fun and that's kind of my bread and butter. And with Heroes and Villains Project, I'm planning on turning that into a book and I'm actually about three-fourths of the way done with it. I have all of the pages finally formatted. I have about half of the pages um, set up with the text that goes on them and now the text is minimal but you know you need to go up, double check go back in make sure everything is spelled correctly the next half of the book is going to be a little tricky because what i'm actually doing with this book is i'm modeling it after a book i got when i was a teenager so i have this book called good fairies bad fairies and the way the book was laid out was the front of the book was all the good fairies and then if you turned the book around and flip it upside down, it was all the bad fairies. So I thought that was a cute idea for doing my heroes and villains book. So like that book, all of the heroic characters will be in the front of the book. And then the book is flipped upside down and all the evil characters are in the back of the book. So I have to make sure that I have the pages in the correct order so that weird things don't happen because there are several double page spreads and so it's just being very careful with the second half of the book but i'm debating now at this point if i want to hold off on actually getting the book printed with everything going on i could send the book off to get it done but i wanted to do pre-orders before i do so i know how many copies i want to get i'm probably only gonna get about 20 to 30 copies just because i don't anticipate a huge volume of people are going to want to actually get the book uh it's always one of those situations where i ask people i say who's interested in this item and then i get a bunch of people saying oh that's really cool i want to get that and then five people actually get it so I don't want to be stuck with a whole bunch of books that I can't do anything with. So we will see. I might just, um, you know, plow through the book, get all the pages done, get it all set up, and then maybe next month do a pre-order for it to see how many people want to get it, and then, um, then order the book. Because, too, I don't know if the company that's going to be doing my printing, I use Maxim to print my zines, and they also do hardcover books, and they do a really good job. So I'm going to use them to do the hardcover book. Um, you know, I don't know if they're going to stay open. The particular branch of Maxim is here in the U.S., but with the economy and everything kind of up in the air right now, it might just be a better idea to hold off a little bit, kind of in the same boat where... I need to get some other products made for my shop, I need to get some stickers done. Now I can make my own stickers, but they're not waterproof, and a lot of the bigger stickers that I make, like the Godzilla stickers, people like to put those on their cars, and if it's not waterproof, I, I mean, I'm just printing these out on my um, big format printer and cutting them out with my silhouette, they look great, but I don't think they're, but I don't think they're gonna last very long if someone puts it on car. I really want to have new stickers made because I haven't put anything substantial in my shop in a really long time and it's starting to show because my Etsy store is really suffering. I think in the past week I've maybe sold two orders 
and five dollars here five dollars there is great but that's not going to pay my bills come next month i'm not in any dire situation at this point i have you know some savings so i will be fine if i don't sell any more stuff from my etsy store and i usually only use my Etsy store to literally just pay my monthly bills. It's not, you know, it's not paying the rent. It's not, you know, doing a whole bunch. It would be nice if I was making more, but right now it's not, it's not my biggest um, source of income. Uh, the, my main source of income is my project commission based stuff. Being so wonky right now in the world, I could order some stickers, but again, that's another weird situation for myself. I usually get my stickers made from a local company and it's basically just like two guys. And I think for a while he was working out of a shop, but I think he moved to his own office or something. But anyway, um, I sent him an email about a month ago and he even called me and told me that he'd get me prices and whatnot. And I haven't heard from him since. So I don't know if he had family issues and he's closed down his store and just isn't responding to any of his work emails or whatnot. You know, I hope he's okay. I hope his family's okay. I understand just kind of putting things on hold where everyone's kind of in panic mode. And I want to use a local person. I don't want to go to a bigger company. But at the same time, I need to get products. Weird situation because do I spend the money and get products and then the stuff doesn't sell and then I'm out the money that I put into the products and then I don't end up getting any commissions in April and I can't pay my rent. So do I sit and wait and hold off or do I just go ahead and do it? It's so stressful. I'm the kind of person that I will just overthink a situation to the point where I become inactive until I can just sort it out. And that sometimes prevents me from moving forward with stuff with other things, not just the thing that I'm like dead focused on. So I need to come up with a solution here soon. And yeah, it's hard. It's hard knowing what's going to happen in the next few weeks to the next can only hope that things calm down soon and and everything goes back to some sort of sense of normality. But anyway, I was talking about projects. See, this is what I mean. These podcasts are going to be me rambling about stuff. So this year's project, I took the concept of the heroes and villains thing and I bumped it up a notch. One thing I've discovered over the past couple of years, I love drawing Lovecraftian style monsters. Just those flowing lines and aberrations with mouths and teeth and eyes and claws and just monsters. But I still like to add some sense of beauty to them, if that makes any sense. I don't want them to just be grotesque. I'm really currently digging this project and it's pretty cool that people seem to be digging it too. Um, that makes me really, um, that makes me really happy. Uh, be, I've just noticed recently how many more people are commenting on my work and how many more, you know, favorites and whatnot people are giving my pieces where I'd maybe get like 75 to a hundred. I'm getting 200, 300. And that's really, really cool. And it's so awesome to have people say, oh, that's cool, or that's really amazing, or I like that style. I read every single comment, and every comment makes me smile. And that's something that I've needed. It's a great boost, and it just makes me really feel like this is a project I need to keep working on. So I'm super happy with this project. And like the Heroes and Villains, this will be a book. It'll probably be a little bit less artwork, because I am going to do um, the artwork and put all that, that descriptive information that I'm adding to the pieces in there too. Adding to the pieces in there too. But we'll see how that all goes. Only time will tell at this point. But I'm really enjoying what I'm doing. So I think I, as much as I, I did like the heroes and villains thing that I did last year, but after a while it started to feel very monotonous. I, there was, 
weeks where I would work on it and I just didn't feel it. And you can see in some of the characters, like it was just me getting the character done and maybe the character wasn't as good as some of the previous ones. I could just, I can look at some of the pieces and I can just tell which ones were like that. Because one of the things I was doing too was pushing myself to try and do one piece a day. And with this project, if I get tired or I get distracted or I get to a point where I get frustrated with the piece, I'm just stepping away from it because I really want to make these the best they can be and not just rush them out because I make money and I gotta get, you know, I gotta pay my bills. So that's, you know, paying my bills is important, but making sure that I am happy with the pieces of art that I'm producing is also important. You know, that's kind of part of the life of being a freelance artist is what are you willing to sacrifice for, you know, getting your art out there? And are you willing to make a sacrifice? And I'm finding at this point, as far as my art goes, I don't want to sacrifice it just to um, make a little money. Needless to say, I need to uh, produce some more stuff specifically for my easy shop. Um, I have some designs and whatnot coming up that I'm going to probably present to my patrons so they can take a look at things and tell me what they think. I'm excited to keep working on this project. It's making me happy. I'm taking a little longer on the pieces and that's fine. I don't have to pump out a piece every single day. I hope to do lots more and build on this world I'm working on. It will be really fun. Who knows, maybe next year rather than just doing a character project, maybe I'll actually do some sort of a comic or something. I've something I've always wanted to do, but I've just never really sat down and done it. Some other artists who I watch on YouTube and uh, on Twitter and whatnot have done comics and they've really inspired me, especially with how they, you know, slowly developed a world and uh, I think world building is super cool and super fun. Uh, it's something that's one of the main reasons that I actually am putting these little stories in with all the characters is I want to practice my world building. I don't know if I'd set a story for a comic in this universe. It's a cool thing to brainstorm and to work on. I don't know, it might be kind of cool if down the line as people read little snippets from these stories, people might ask for, you know, hey, can you make a character that's for, you know, hey, can you make a character that's from this region um, that's an elf or something? That would be kind of cool. So then I could tie in their character that they want me to make into, um, you know, in, into a cult or a sect or whatever I come up with that goes that that lives in this world. But anyway, I have been rambling on for a while. You're probably getting pretty bored, so I am going to cut off everything right here. If you enjoyed my insane rambling this week, please feel free to like this video. If you didn't like it, hit that thumbs down. If you're new here, please subscribe. If you have any suggestions for other topics you would like me to cover, be it easy, be it sticker making, be it shirt printing, or my experience with uh, getting work from outside vendors, or you just want to hear about maybe things I enjoy, game my gaming life, what sorts of things I'm into, because I am a giant. Comment below, chat with me. I am typically available. Um, you can always leave messages for me in the comments or you can direct message me on several different platforms. I am all over the place. But until next time, guys, please stay safe, keep yourselves healthy, wash your damn hands, and until next week, bye.